Torah tells us in the parsha that when you come into Canaan and you come upon all the various idolatries of the nations of Canaan, whether they are on the mountains, whether they're altars, whether the trees they worshipped, you should destroy them, you should smash them, you should cut them down. And then the Torah concludes, what you're doing there, destruction, smashing the altars, the locations of the idolatry, or cutting down the trees which they worshipped, so Rashi cites the Midrash and the Gemara that if a person is mochik es Hashem, if you have the name of Hashem written and you erase the name, you're a violation of a no, negative commandment. What I'm commanding you to do to them, to the idolatry, that act you should not do to the name of Hashem. As it says, that's mechikas Hashem. Or if you have a mizbeach and you go and you damage the mizbeach, the mizbeach in the mishka, the Beis Hamikdash, if you damage it, your violation of losas kel Hashem elokechem. You should not do such to your God, which lahavdiel I command you to do to them, to the to the idolatry. So we hear. Rashi cites Rabbi Shmuel to Sifri. Omer Rabbi Shmuel v'chisala daitoch shishol notzim is mizbechos. I mean, is it even to be considered? God has to tell us not to destroy the, the mizbeach, the altar. I mean, would a Jew even consider doing such a thing? It's so far fetched, so remote. So evidently, there's no question. If you do that, you are in violation. But why is the Torah telling us losas kein l'shem elokechem? You should not do such to your God. You should not in any way emulate or mimic the behavior of the nations, which were idolaters. And as a result of that, your behavior or actions will ultimately cause the base to be destroyed. That why am I telling you to destroy the nations of Canaan? Because they represent all this evil within the context of spirituality. You should not in any way behave in such a manner because ultimately it will bring about the destruction of Beis HaMikdosh, which everything, which is what? Which is the ultimate level of Chil HaShem. Lo yigmu maseichem shichorev mikdashchem. Your action shouldn't be the cause that the Beis HaMikdosh should be destroyed. Interesting. What is, the, we're equating it. You go into Canaan, you smash, you uproot, you cut down, you obliterate and remove all that evil that exists there. You have to realize that if your behavior mimics their behavior, ultimately you're going to do the same to the Beis HaMikdosh. So don't do that. Don't cause that level of destruction. Your actions will bring that about. It's interesting. Meaning, if you speak Lashon HaRa, you violate the Shabbos. You don't put on tefillin. You don't, as the Gemara tells us, why was the first piece of me destroyed? Because of the three cardinal sins. Idolatry, adultery, incest, and shvichas domim, and bloodshed. However, the Gemara quotes a Pasuk, that the Pesach tells us, al ozum es Torosi, because they abandoned the Torah. And we explained, and the Gemara says, what does it mean they abandoned the Torah? al Ashel birchu b'Torah t'chilo, because when they studied the Torah, they did not predicate it on birchas Torah, which would have indicated, as, Rabbeinu, as the Ran cites Rabbeinu Yonah Chosid, that the objective would have been, you're studying Luminan Las Lasos. The main focus is, with studying to be knowledgeable, to be able to perform the mitzvahs correctly. That wasn't, that wasn't the emphasis of the studies. As a result of that, the value and the effect of the learning did not spiritualize them. And therefore they had these insensitivities and therefore they crossed many lines 
which they did cross. Even Gilei Reis, Avodazor Shvichas Domim, the most most extreme level of of transgression. Losas kei l'Hashem elokechem. Don't do, don't behave in that manner of the Canaanites, the Canaanim, because why am I telling you to destroy them? Because they represent that level of evil. But you realize if you in any way emulate and behave as they did, you're going to bring about this, the same result. What's going to be the result? The Beis Amigdosh wouldn't be able to exist. So therefore, you're the co- direct cause of the destruction of Beis Amigdosh. Don't do such to your, to God. As what I'm telling you to them. You know, we say in, in life, we have Alan on now, you know, things are cumulative. Right? Person smokes at a certain age. Initially, he's not affected. But if you smoke enough and long enough, ultimately, it'll start compromising your health or foods, carcinogens, whatever it is. Everything is cumulative life. A person doesn't obey or transgresses. Initially, it's an infraction. It causes some level of diminishment. But over time, or the masses, if they misbehave and do certain things, ultimately, and you reach a certain critical mass of evil, you topple the, you topple the apple cart. You know, you have a, a tree. You start chopping at the base. You just cut into the tree, the tree's not falling. But if you keep chopping away at the base, eventually the weight of the tree will cause it to fall. If there's enough sin, ultimately the base of each will be destroyed. So the Torah tells us, you should not cross those lines. Even though we say, there's no perfect tzaddik. We all have an imperfect record. But factually, but if you do it, without conscience or unabashedly, without consideration, ultimately, you can destroy the Beis HaMikdosh. You know, there's a famous word from Rabbi Shol Salanter that, you know, we always speak about communal responsibility, that although a certain segment of Jews did not sin, but God deals with Klal Yisrael as a, as a nation. And we, we're seen as one entity. And therefore, as the Bidjish tells us, you have two people in a boat. And one person begins boring a hole on the receipt. So his neighbor says to him, what are you doing? He says, well, I'm boring a hole. He says, but you realize if you do that, the ship's going down. The boat's going down. He says, yeah, but it's under my seat. It's not under your seat. That's what the person responds to his neighbor. The answer is, we're, one, we're all in one boat. Kalal Yisrael, we're one entity of existence. And if there's any negative energy which is brought into the system, you bring a virus into the system, we're all affected by it. So sin is that if you infuse something positive in the system, we're all beneficiaries of that. Losas ke l'ashem elokechem servi. So Santa says, when the Jew speaks Loshan Hara in Vilna, another Jew is Machal Shabbos in Brisk. Meaning, if the system is viable and healthy, Jews have clarity because the system is spiritualized. When the system starts faltering and you begin having brownouts and the clarity is not there and the sensitivity is not there, so when the Jew speaks Loshan Hara in Vilna, another Jew violate shops and brisk. Of course, the senses, the spiritual senses of culture, understanding the difference between right and wrong, at best, it's on a moral ethical level, but in terms of on the spiritual level, we lose, lose our sensitivities for our spirituality. And we all contribute to that, both positively and, and negatively, in the same context. There's no difference. I just want to mention one thing. The Midrash tells us 
that if you sin in Israel, the level of liability is much greater in, in Israel than outside of Israel. We speak in, in the in, in Chutz Lawrence, Chutz outside of Israel. Why? And it compares it that when a person sins in Israel, Israel is called Palton Shel Melech. It's the palace of the king. Outside of Israel, what we call Chutz Lawrence is called, that's in the hinterlands. You're not, it's not Palton Shel Melech. A person is a subject of a king and he lives in a far out community and it's not within the proximity of where the king is, where his palace is. Although you violated the law, but the level of transgression is not as serious because it doesn't have that level of arrogance or defiance. I mean, how do you, how do you sin? You're in the presence of the king. Eretz Yisrael, you're in the presence of the king. I'll give you an example. The way it's ruled, Ramosha Feinstein has a, a tshuva, a response on this. The aloha is when we see tachnun, you only put your head down if there's a Sefer Torah. If there's no Sefer Torah, you say tachnun, but you, you don't put your head down. Because it's derived from Yeshua. After the Battle of Ai, there were 36 Jews that were killed in, in that battle. No Jews were supposed to be killed. It was supposed to be taken by miracle, and they weren't supposed to be casualties. Yeshua immediately knew that there was a problem. If the casualties, something very bad went wrong. So he went and he says he prostrated himself before the Oron, before the Ark. Oron's the Sefer Torah, the Luchos. So from there we learn that that's one of the manners of supplication. You cover your face in the presence of the Sefer Torah. So therefore the halacha is, only we, the Sefer Torah exists, that's where you actually, you cover your face when you say Tachna. If there's no Sefer Torah, if you're davening at home, and you say you do say Tachna, but you don't cover your face. There's a cool question if you have Svarim, you have a Shas, you have a Rambam in the room, because that encompasses the whole Torah, there's a question, maybe that is sufficient. And you do cover your face. Question, but if you don't have either, you don't. So what about a Yushalayim, right? Yushalayim. And you're saying, Tach, you're davening by yourself. You're not at the Kosel. You're not in, the, in a shul or a basement where there's a safe to Do you cover your face? The Allah is you do cover your safe face. Why? Because Yushalayim, although Eretz Yisrael's Eretz HaKadosha, it's the Holy Land, but the Shechina exists in Yushalayim at another level. And so there, it's considered you're in the presence of the Shechina. And when you're in the presence of the Shechina, you cover your face. And that's that's the way it's ruled, La Locha. In Yerushalayim, even if you're not davening in a shul with the minion, you're in your hotel room, when you say Tachn, you cover your face. Because again, because that level of Kedusha. So sinning in Eretz Yisrael, even outside Yerushalayim, it's still called Eretz HaKedusha. It's the Holy Land. Therefore, it's Palt Shel Melech. Therefore, the level of the liability for transgression for, for Avera has a greater liability because the act itself is considered much more grave because of its location for that reason.